Darren Cruikshank here, doing a review on all of the gear that I ran at the Wolverine 5K 2022. Let's go through it. So, Skinny Samo ran awesome all day long. I shoot, uh, I shot 55 grainers. There's nothing really far. It's like 100 yard base. Um, and then my pistol, I ran uh, 124s. Uh, the pistol, let's go to that. It, I ran my Rock Island 1911 double stack uh, Trigicon SRO. I am sponsored by Trigicon, so you're going to see a lot of Trigicon optics right now. But uh, I like a 1MOA dot. This thing ran uh, great all day long. Let's go with the uh, rifle slash pistol that I decided to run. Um, Again, like I said, they're like 100 yard bays or 50 yard bays for the most part of the match. So I don't need a full length rifle to reach out and touch stuff, um, which this is 11 and a half inch uh, piston driven BG Defense AR uh, pistol. I am sponsored. You're going to see a lot of that in all my other videos too. Um, and then be super tactical. I ran my GSL multi-cal can. And again, it's a piston freaking runs awesome with a can on it. You can adjust it, adjustable gas, sweet. So I went with Trigicon, uh, this is a Credo 1 to 6 with a Trigicon SRO on the side and I mounted the RMR on top for the gas mask stage. Um, that way you get a better uh, cheek weld and all that stuff. So let's talk about the gas mask stage. Uh, they did supply gas masks, but you could also bring your own. So I don't want to put somebody else's stuff on. Um, I've had this gas mask for years as like, you know, whatever. Uh, it's not a, I wouldn't rely on this to stop like real gas, but, um, I do a little paint job on it. It looks freaking sweet. Uh, this did have like a water, water note, like a uh, valve thing on here. So you could drink water through it. Um, I cut it off and I patched it with a tire patch, that way it's on my right side. I can still get a nice cheek weld on my rifle. Um, is that gaming? Maybe. Is it a real gas mask? I don't know. I wouldn't trust it, but uh, yeah, that's what I ran right there. Boom. Um, let's talk about the boots that I wore. So these are the uh, Johnny Combat Vintage boots. Um, from Victos brand. These were awesome. They're vented. They're like, uh, if water goes in, it comes out really easy. I ran these on the hike and everything. I tracked nine miles um, in the woods. I've done multiple hikes with these things. I shoot almost every match in them. Um, yeah, so I like these. These are the Victos vented Johnny Combat boots. Um, I actually didn't wear a shirt all day long. I shot the match and did the hike with no shirt on. Um, why? I don't know why. It's, I thought it was a great idea. One, circulation. I didn't have clothes, to quite, you know, like making me all hot and stuff. But um, two, I could check for kicks really easy. I mean, I didn't have anything on. So if I there was one on me, I would know right away. But guess what? Very surprisingly, I didn't catch any ticks. Um, right now, they're hot in Michigan. And uh, everybody was warning me about getting ticks and stuff like that. I was in the woods for like two hours or something. Didn't going through brush like super thick brush. Didn't pick any up. I was super surprised. Um, I rocked the uh, Victos brand. What do we got here? Uh, Operator shorts, super light. Still has a belt belt loop for the gun belt, um, which is awesome. But uh, yeah, that, I was rocking shorts all day long. Um, didn't get burned, didn't skin my knees or anything. We were like running and jumping, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, I was fine. Um, let's talk about plate carrier. Because in this match, you have to wear uh, 12 pounds of plates. So, and for me, I was picking up style points. I went with the, uh, what is this? Shellback Tactical American Flag uh, plate carrier. Um, it does have like little mag pouches on the front. I'm not keen to wearing a bunch of mags on the front, especially like I'm not going into battle. I don't need uh, three mags on my chest rig when I have one on my belt and in a game, all I need is that one to reload to. So um, I have this, but if I had to uh, go
go to multiple mags. I didn't really know every stage. Like, hey, they're, they're, sometimes they throw hiccups in there. Um, I have a, I did a drop leg with three rifle mags, three pistol mags, um, especially with the plates. It's not like right up under your plate. You can still move, dip, dive, dodge, dip, you know, five dodge a dodge ball. Um, so here's my belt set up. Boom, again, drop leg. I have a uh, dump pouch. It's actually made for rock climbing. Um, American flag, a little, it's like for like the, uh, the, whatever they put on their hands, chalk. Um, but it works great. I mean, it holds a couple mags. That's all you really need. I'm not throwing a bunch of stuff back there. And then my uh, drop leg holster for my Rock Island, I actually make my own holsters. Um, not crazy fancy, but guess what? It locks it in and it's super tight. So um, that's my... That is my belt system. Uh, a couple recommendations. If you're gonna shoot the match, uh, bring a ton of mags, put tape around them, and then mark each mag. Uh, you're gonna fill them up for that exact stage. Every stage has like a downloaded mag, like this stage is three six round mags or blah, blah, blah. That way you can go grab the mags you need for each stage, rush to the stage and do it because the 5K is a race, and if you don't race to get to every stage and get those stages in, you're not going to finish all the stages. If you don't finish all the stages, you are minusing points from yourself, and you're not going to do well. So, big key part of that match is gaming. What stages are worth the most? Doing those, and then when things pop up, you should be able to grab your bags and mags that are ready already for that stage and go. Um, that was huge for us. That way, we could get every stage in the amount of time that we're supposed to do it. Um, I, all the, the highlight video, all the stuff that was first person shooter type of uh, view, I did with my uh, Hero 7, Go, GoPro Hero 7. Um, let's talk about glasses. Not a lot of people think about this, but I think it's a huge um, advantage. So during the day, especially super hot days, um, when your glasses fog up, right? Your shooting glasses, if you're just using those like, crappy little plastic ones you find at Home Depot or whatever, those are not gonna do it. Um, your, your glasses are gonna fog up, you're not gonna be able to see, you've got sweat down them and you're all pissed off already because you're messing up the stage from all these other different stresses. Um, I've been shooting in these for years now. I, they're awesome. They look goofy, right? Like they're a goofy looking little thing, but these are uh, actually made by Oakley. They're, for, they're like safety glasses for dudes that uh, like uh, for bike riders, right? Like they're on their bike all the day long, right? Um, but the cool thing is, is one, these adjust to the lighting. So if it's super dark, it, they light, they darken up. If it's light out here, it, like I don't really have to deal with them. They don't get crazy dark. That's why I have a second different pair. But um, what they do best is they don't fog up. These guys right here, see that open top allows the heat to come out. And when it's extremely hot, okay, see this nose piece. Boom, I push it off my face. It keeps, it lets more air ventilate, right? And I think it's huge. So if you're in the, if you if you constantly get fogged up and you're like, man, these things suck, check these out. They're Oakley's, I don't know the, the, the whatever. Oh, flight jacket, they're the flight jacket. Check it out. And then my super dark pair that I switched after the morning uh, are the uh, same uh, bike. These are Oakley's, but they don't push off your face, but they're crazy dark. Those ones didn't come in that dark, but um, so super, super bright outside. It's again, it's another road bike type of thing. It allows it to pop up, stays off your face really well. And these things are crazy dark. Um, what do we got here? These are Oakley's uh, encoder, Oakley's encoder. Uh, let's see, that's all my stuff. Let's talk about the hike itself and the backpack that I used. Uh, during the hike, it says 5K, we did way more. That's probably because we like, we're thinking we were gonna do like, cut down the middle of this and make it a shorter route and actually we freaking made it longer. Total nine miles is what I did. Um, but as far as the, the hike itself, you have your backpack. Some guys wore their plates minus the plate weight to their backpack. Total weight carried uh, is supposed to, be, you start at 45 pounds. Um, and that's not including water. I used uh, just a camel pack on the back of this. That was awesome. I put two bottles of water in it and I didn't even go through that in like the two hours that we were in the, in the woods um, and the nine miles. So 
Uh, that's one thing I've done every year. Like I take too many, too many bottles of water last year or this year I took two bottles in my, in my pack. And then I had two other bottles on the side. If I needed to go to that, I, that was extra weight. I basically carried another pound or whatever in water that I didn't need to do. So knowing next year, I'm definitely not going to bring as much water. Camel packs just fine. Um, but let's talk about the bag. So this is a mystery ranch mule. It's like designed for like carrying out dead animals, like shoot it, chop it up, put it in the pack, hike back to base camp or whatever. Um, so it's actually really cool. It, uh, you know, it's got its own frame. Um, but the cool thing is, is you can put weird items in this thing and it doesn't like, it doesn't mess up. Like I could throw tripods, I could throw my plate carrier, I could put a gun in there. Like, uh, it just straps to it. So for me in the way I did my weight was I had, uh, four 10 pound plates in here. Um, and the plates, I just zip tied to the frame. They were super flat, right? Like super flat in my back, two four, or four 10 pound plates. And then I had like, uh, what I have, like a sandbag, a shooting sandbag in the back. And it made 45 pounds with the, with the pack weight and stuff like that. It was perfect. Um, and then throughout the race, uh, cause it's a team event. When one of your partners are basically dying, right? Because they're exhausted. You take some of their weight and you put it in your own pack. My skill in this match, one of them is to come in shape, ready to work. I am a mule. Okay. That's one of my things is, is if one of my partners are dying, I have to take their shit and get it back to the finish line because it's a team event and we all got to make it. Um, so one of our guys started, uh, getting exhausted. I could see him like barely get up and get down, checking his company, stuff like that. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to take some of your weight. I took uh, 10 pounds of his weight. A buddy of mine, one of the other guys took another 10 pounds of his weight. And then halfway through that, the, my other buddy was dying. So I took that 10 pounds off him and I took another five pounds off another guy and I threw it all in my pack. I think I had like 70 pounds for like five miles. And then, uh, we got to the brick, the brick where you got to pick it up and carry it for extra time is like 15 pounds. So I had 70, 80, I had 85 pounds on my back. Um, for a good majority of the miles is crazy. And then like 200, 300 yards, uh, to the finish line. One of my guys, uh, literally goes down legs cramped up. He cannot move. He's on the ground in pain. Can't get his leg to, uh, to, to like break open as far as like, uh, you know, the stiffness he's got a big giant cramp. So we get that, uh, we get it massaged out. We get him back on his feet. I give him the flag for that. The American flag as basically literally, literally like a crutch. Uh, to get to the finish line, I grab his pack. His pack has like 65 pounds in it right now. I grab his pack, I bear hug it, and I get it to the finish line. And then right before the finish, we handle all the weight and we turn our stuff in. Um, but it, like one of my skills is coming to the mat in shape. So that way the guys that are more skilled at say orienteering or something like that can do what they have to do. And I can get their stress off their back. Um, it's a team event. It's freaking awesome. So uh, that this was 2022. We took third as a team. Team Trigicon took third. Um, sweet little trophy. Pretty sweet. Got to take it home. The team that won it, I think their name's Team America. Pretty sweet name. Um, I'm pretty sure that they're like active, uh, like Green Berets or something like that. They literally get paid to kill people. The government pays them to do cool shit, which is awesome. Um, I think we beat them on a bunch of shooting stages, but they smoked us in the orange hearing, like literally beat us by an hour. Um, the next team was like army reserve, something, something cool. Um, but if, uh, if we came and we put it together on the orange hearing stage, we would smash them. Now, that being said, they're super skilled people and this match throws you bones all day long. So it's all about, uh, hitting that wall, getting over it, helping your partners get through it and, uh, finishing as a team. So I can't wait for next year. Again, uh, if you like this review, like, share, subscribe. I don't know. I'm pretty not active on YouTube, but I'm trying to pick it up and you can actually check this out on gunspace.com. Also, it's another app. It's freaking sweet. Uh, again, my sponsors, Victos brand, uh, Phoenix ammo, uh, Trigicon, GSL Technologies, BG Defense, ATEI. Uh, there's a lot.
I get hit in the head a lot. Okay, well, hope hopefully you guys like this. Peace out. Later. Bye.